pow, zap, bam, zing. To me, there is no other ingredient that is more perfectly suited to onomatopoeia than ginger. Ginger zaps with citrusy aroma and zings with a pleasant burn. It can build deep, complex warmth in a cookie, lend fiery heat to a sauce or stir fry, or wipe your palate clean between bites of sushi. Ginger is one of the most lively and exciting ingredients we cooks have at our disposal, but it's complicated. So let's do this. Pow! When you buy ginger at the supermarket, you are buying a rhizome, a root-like mass that grows underground. Put in the soil and left to its own devices, a ginger rhizome would grow a flowering plant like this. It's actually really pretty. Once you get the ginger home and you scrape off its papery skin, which is easy to do with a spoon, and you start slicing, you get hit with aroma. And mmm, what an aroma. I get loads of citrus, tons of lemongrass, and in fact, ginger shares aroma compounds with both of those. But it's not until you pop ginger in your mouth that you experience its most memorable characteristic, pain. More specifically, the warm, burning sensation we get when a special receptor in our mouths called TRPV1 is activated by chemical compounds. Here's where things get complicated, but really interesting. When it comes to feeling the burn, capsaicin found in chilies is the gold standard we most often use because it fits pretty well into that receptor, causing loads of sensation. There is a compound that fits better than capsaicin called resin resin called resin resinifer resiniferatoxin. There is a compound that fits better than capsaicin called resiniferatoxin. It's a thousand times spicier than capsaicin. That's crazy. That's also a totally different conversation. The compound in fresh ginger that triggers the TRPV1 receptor is called gingerol. It fits into the receptor, but not nearly as well as capsaicin. And for that reason, we experience it as much less spicy. But that's not the whole story. When we dry ginger to make the dry spice we use in spice cake and cookies, Gingerol loses a molecule of water and turns into another compound called shogaol. Shogaol is a closer match to capsaicin than gingerol. It fits into the receptor better, and so we experience it as spicier. We can also go in the other direction. If we cook ginger, like we do in a stir fry, we break down some of the gingerol into another compound called zingerone. You gotta love these names. It fits poorly into the receptor, and so we experience it as less spicy than either fresh or dried ginger. Okay, so let's put all of these in order, from spiciest to least spicy, along with their chemical structure. That would be capsaicin, found in chilies, shogaol, found in dry ginger, gingerol, found in fresh ginger, and finally, zingerone, found in cooked ginger. Here's the really cool bit. The closer the chemical structure is to capsaicin, that strong fit, the spicier the ginger experience. Pretty neat, right? Kapow! As a cook, you don't need to know all those different chemical structures and names, but it is important to remember that ginger spiciness changes based on what we do to it. Ginger could stop right there, and I would crown it as one of the most interesting ingredients we have to work with in the kitchen. But we're not done yet. Ginger is also packed with a powerful enzyme called zingibane that can break proteins down into smaller pieces. Fruits like papaya and pineapple contain similar enzymes, and their impact on meat is dramatic. So let's go in the kitchen and check out an experiment. Here's what happens if you put fresh grated ginger on a piece of beef and let it sit for 30 minutes before cooking. The exterior turns tasty and mushy. Now is this technically more tender? Yes, but it's also, it's just really, really gross. If you do want to marinate with ginger for great flavor, but you don't want mushy meat, you have a couple of options. The first is to keep the marinade time really short. The second is to add acid to the marinade. High acid will help inhibit that enzyme. And finally, the most foolproof method is to actually heat up some of the marinade with that ginger and help deactivate that enzyme. That's what I did for this sample, which also marinated for 30 minutes. But you can also harness the power of zingibane to make one of the coolest desserts ever. Here's how you do it. First, grate ginger and then squeeze it out into a shallow bowl like this. Then heat skim milk and sugar to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour the warm milk from up high in one smooth motion into the ginger juice in the bowl. Let it sit undisturbed for a few minutes, and then look at this. You get this gorgeous, delicate milk gel that tastes like sweet ginger. This might feel like some crazy modernist cooking, but it's actually a traditional Chinese dish. Oh, and by the way, we just made cheese using ginger juice. Bam! There are so many incredible foods that you can make with ginger. You can pickle your own with just thinly sliced ginger, some rice vinegar, salt, and sugar. Some ginger will turn pink because its pigments are impacted by pH, but that will depend on the type of ginger that you bought. Or you can make ginger snap cookies. A combination of fresh and dried ginger provides complex flavor and heat, and a little cayenne and black pepper help draw that burn out for a cookie with serious bite. 
or you can make a ginger scallion sauce that's finished with hot oil that you're gonna wanna put on everything. You know what? I'm gonna put some of that on this steak that I just seared off for lunch. Pow! And this is how to eat ginger. Thank you all for watching. Do you have any ginger questions? Any spicy questions for me? Put them in the comments below. Hit subscribe, hit that little bell, and tell your friends.